English is weird, and I'm Justin Rempel. Uh, in this presentation, we are talking about oddities of English. That means unusual things, and this is just a fun one. We're going to be looking at uh, some weird quirks of the English language and uh, just taking a bit of a chuckle, talking about how weird the English language is. Let's take a chuckle, as they say. Why is English so weird? Why? Well, English is a total mess. And the reason it's a total mess is that it's been around for a long time. And over that time, it's come into contact with a lot of different languages and it's absorbed uh, a bunch of different languages. So this pie chart on the screen uh, gives us uh, a bit of a taste of all these different pieces that make up the English pie. And you can see the green piece is Germanic languages. Uh, that's about 26%, about a quarter. Um, and Germanic doesn't mean just German. Germanic means a family of languages that are kind of related to each other, including Old English or Anglo-Saxon. So that's where English starts. Um, and you can see that by the time we get to the present day, it isn't very much of how it started out. We don't have a lot of Old English left. Uh, in fact, some estimates say that 85% of Old English no longer remains in the modern English language. So uh, English is a lot of things, um, but it's not very English anymore. One of the main things English is, is French. It's 29% uh, French, so over a quarter French. And the reason we've got so much French in the English language is because in 1066, William the Conqueror wins the Battle of Hastings and uh, introduces French onto the Isle of, of Britain. And French becomes the uh, language of the court, the royal language that is spoken. And it works its way into the vocabulary. It works its way into the language structure uh, and syntax. Um, it works its way into the rules of the language and how it's organized and set up. So English is actually a very French uh, language. You can see that uh, about the same percentage, 29% is Latin. Um, during periods like the Renaissance, where English scholars are very interested in classical Western languages of antiquity, there's lots of study of these ancient languages like Latin and Greek. And Latin especially um, influences the English language. Uh, a lot of our words have roots in the Latin language. Uh, and there's a smattering of other things, uh, but those are some of the main pieces of the pie uh, that make this language so messy. For every rule that you're going to find in the English language, there are exceptions. And this is one of the reasons why, is because uh, many of our words are mashed together in this language and are not actually that related to each other. And so they don't follow the rules very well. Here's our first oddity that we're going to take a look at. And it's this letter combo O-U-G-H. How would you pronounce these letters together in this order? How do we say this? Well, you can say it a lot of different ways depending on your accent and depending on what word you find it in. Uh, there are at least eight different ways that you can say this letter combination in the English language legitimately. Uh, and we can see that in this sample sentence. A rough-coated, dough-faced, thoughtful plowman strode through the streets of Scarborough, coughing and hiccuping. Eight different pronunciations. In the word rough, it sounds like uff. In the word do, it sounds like o. Oh. In the word thought, it sounds like ah. Uh. In the word plow, it sounds like ow. In the word through, it sounds like oo. In the word Scarborough, which is a place name, it sounds like a. Uh. In the word cough, it sounds like off. And in the word hiccup, it sounds like up. So why do you, the same letter combinations make different sounds? Often it is due to different languages of origin or vowel shifts over time. Rhythms. What is odd about this word rhythms? 
Uh, well, rhythms is the longest English word that you can find without the five traditional vowels, A, E, I, O, or U. Now, it does have the letter Y in there. Y is sometimes considered a vowel. But without those five traditional vowels, this is the longest word you can get is rhythms. It's a very unusual word. Um, <clears throat> just a sidebar, what do I mean when I say a vowel? Um, linguistically speaking, a vowel is referring to a sound that is formed from an open vocal tract. So that means um, air is able to pass through freely. There's no stoppage. Uh, it involves breath and vibration of the vocal cords. So you're actually breathing out. You're making noise by vibrating your vocal cords. Uh, eh, eh, ah, ah. Okay, no stoppages. Uh, and it kind of forms the core of a syllable. So any syllable that you say of a word in the English language is going to have a vowel in it, um, or a vowel sound at least. All other letters are considered consonants because they have uh, stoppages of some kind, right? T, d, b, k, m, n. They're all stopping or blocking the vocal tract in some way to create their noise. And Y is this hybrid letter that sometimes goes back and forth. Sometimes we call it a vowel, sometimes a consonant, depending on how it's functioning. Is it functioning in a word like this, where it's really making an I sound, rhythms, uh, or is it making that y sound um, that's a lot more consonant-like? Set. This is a very common short three-letter word. What is so odd about this word set? Well, let me ask you this. What does this word mean? It can mean a lot of different things. It is odd because of how common it is and because of how many different ways uh, it can be used. This common English word, S-E-T, set, holds the record for most dictionary definitions. So if you think about these pictures, right, we can use it to refer to a set of books, right, is kind of a series that belongs together, a group. Uh, we can use it as an action, like to set the table. Um, there's a lot of different definitions. In fact, if you look at the Oxford English Dictionary, which is kind of the authoritative, most official dictionary in the English language, you can find 192 definitions for the word set. Do a bit of a deep dive on your own, check it out. This word can mean a lot of different things and we use it a lot of different ways without even really thinking about it. 192, record for most different definitions. How would you pronounce this made up word? This is a little uh, language experiment that was invented by the Irish playwright George Bernard Shaw, and he was having a little bit of fun with words and letters and sounds. So he spelled this out, uh, this five letter sequence, G-H-O-T-I, and he says, how do you pronounce this? Well, you look at it visually based on the rules of how these letters commonly function, and how they commonly sound, you would probably say this something like goatee, as in the, the beard style, goatee. However, Shaw, who's having some fun and kidding around, this is totally made up, right? He says, no, this is actually pronounced fish. According to legitimate English letter pronunciations from other words, you can make the case that this word could be pronounced fish. So that GH that we see at the start, does make an F sound um, in words like laugh or cough. So he says, that's how I want it pronounced in this case. The O, which forms the central vowel, um, can make an I sound, I, um, as in women. And the T-I can make a sh sound, which is usually spelled as an S-H in English, um, in words like nation. Okay. So G-H-O-T-I, fish. Um, Shaw is just pointing out how messy and complicated the English language is and how letters can make some really unusual sounds depending on the word that you find them in. And again, that has to do with how words have changed over time. It has to do with language of origin. It has to do with all sorts of things. Contronyms. 
Contronyms are fun. They're words that can mean the exact opposite of themselves. So it's the same word or the same phrase, and you can use it to create opposite meanings. Um, and there's a few different names for words like this. They're also called contranyms, Janus words after Janus, the uh, two-faced Roman god, um, antagonyms or autoantonyms. Uh, here's some examples. The word fast. We can use the word fast to mean move very quickly. He ran fast, and that's how it's usually used. But we can also use the word fast to mean stuck in place, which is the opposite of moving quickly. The ropes held him fast in place. The word bound can mean uh, headed towards something. We were homeward bound, means we're going home. Um, but you can also word, use the word bound to mean stuck in one place. We were bound by ropes. The word buckle um, can mean to hold something together, buckle your seat belts, but it can also mean to fall apart. They will buckle under pressure. The word clip can mean to attach something, I will clip on my tie, or it can mean to cut something off, I will clip my nails. Same word, opposite meanings. Contronyms are kind of fun. Anti-autonyms are kind of similar to contronyms. They're two different words and phrases, and they sound and look like they should be opposite things, but they have the same meanings or very similar meanings. Um, often one comes about through colloquial usage, which is grammatically incorrect, but it's used so commonly Colloquial just means everyday slang, uh, common usage. It's used so commonly that it gets accepted as a dictionary definition, which is how words change in meaning over time. Um, so here's an example, boned and deboned. You look at those words and it looks very obvious that they should mean opposite things, but you can use them in basically the same way. I boned the fish or I deboned the fish. Either way, you're talking about removing the bones. The house burned up or the house burned down. You think about up and down, those are opposites. This should mean opposite things, but either way, you're really just saying that the house was destroyed by fire. I could care less. I could not care less. Um, this is one of my pet peeves. People use this phrase, I could care less. And what they mean is they could not care any more than they do right now, or any less rather. Uh, so even though it means something different because it's been used incorrectly over time, it comes to mean something else. Uh, the newspaper covered the scandal, the newspaper uncovered the scandal. Both of these are just ways of saying that the newspaper reported on the scandal, uh, but it sounds like they should be opposites, covered and uncovered. This diamond ring is pricey, this diamond ring is priceless, okay? Um, those sound like they should be opposites, but really they have a very similar meaning. You're just saying that the ring is expensive. Uh, this, these are rhetorical questions. They often function as anti-autonyms. Should we ask for more money or shouldn't we ask for more money? Are both rhetorical questions suggesting that, of course, it's obvious we should ask for a raise, we should ask for some more money, but we're using the words should and shouldn't to mean exactly the same thing. This diamond ring is invaluable. This diamond ring is valuable. Valuable and invaluable, both used to mean of great value. And of course, um, one of my pet peeves, irregardless, used to mean regardless. Unique endings. Here's some words that end in unique ways. For example, the word dreamt um, is the past tense of the, the word dream. And it's the only word that you find in the English language that ends with this letter combo, MT. I defy you to find another one, dreamt. There are only two words in the English language that begin and end with the letter combo, UND, underground and under fund. Just a weird piece of trivia. They have UND at the start and end, only two words like that. And there are only two words in the English language that end with G-R-Y, angry and hungry. Of course, they can be combined to make the slang word hangry, which means you're angry and hungry at the same time. 
And lastly, we're going to look at a few very unusual words in the English language uh, for very random reasons. Starting with the word almost. This is a very common word. It doesn't look odd in any way, but it is the longest commonly used word that we find in the English language in which all the letters are in alphabetical order. Try to find a longer one. You might be able to find some obscure technical term, but this is the longest commonly used word in the English language that works this way. Letters in alphabetical order. Bookkeeper. Bookkeeper is the only word in the English language so far, we're always adding on more, that has three consecutive double letters. Double O, double K, double E. A Q is a word that refers to a line of people. It is the only English word that is pronounced the same way when you remove the last four letters. Uh, if you take off all those vowels at the end, the U, E, U, E, what do you end up with? The letter Q. Queuing, which is the act of waiting in line, is the only English word with five consecutive vowels. U, E, U, E, I. One, two, three, four, five. Therein. Uh, this is not a very commonly used word anymore. It's a little archaic. Um, it's a seven letter word and it means in which, in there, uh, for example, therein was written a message for me. Therein is an unusual word because it contains no less than 13 words spelled using consecutive letters, not rearranged or scrambled. So if you look at the word therein, you can find 13 words spelled um, in order. You can find the letter the, T -H, or the word the, T-H-E. You can find the word he, uh, the word her, er, here, I, there, air, rain, re, in, therein, and herein. All without doing any scrambling or rearranging. The letters are there in the order to make those words.